the, the approval was basically based on if it was if it was not maintenance of that. It was a one, a one shot deal. And the letter that came back said therefore it will affect the town's maintenance of it have an obligation on the I'll let it uh, time stamp was December twenty eighth, twenty fifteen. Mm -hmm. So did you make a decision on that? We're not aware of any decision. Well decision was such if it didn't affect it that it would be approved. If it did, well, that's just, that was unfortunately the horse of a different color. So you did vote out. So no, 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 we, no, we haven't, we haven't voted on it. But also, too, we're waiting for uh, the other item from uh, from our solicitor dealing with other 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 things with Ryan. But I don't think that relates to that. No, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah. But it's, that, that issue is resolved. Ryan issued a decision on that MOA decision. It does affect the MOA. Right. So it's. So therefore, it's, so it's just up to the council where they want to be visited. Is there a request from the school committee to for the town council to reconsider their decision? We thought actually nothing? it was being reconsidered and it was um, just awaiting the right decision, the uh, ruling. But if the ruling has come in that was adverse to the prior decision, do you want the town council to consider that? Is yes. that your request? Yes. So, I think that's what the item is on the agenda for, is my understanding. Yes. Mr. Uh, Solicitor, can we take a vote on this this evening? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, it's definitely on the agenda. I think that's now I understand that that's why it was on the agenda. Okay. Discussion dealing with this issue, dealing with the uh, uh, the, the sixty-six, what, sixty-six thousand, sixty-six thousand six hundred twenty-two thousand dollars. Yeah, dealing, uh, dealing with the appropriation of the measure. Is it? We'll place it for a vote. Can I have a second, please. Second. Okay, second for discussion by Councilwoman Alves. Well, based, based on the principles that we originally uh, had voted on, and I'll reach out to the budget committee if I may on that. Was it? Uh, this, no, I would like to reach out to the budget committee. I, I guess I would just like a point of clarification, if I may. Yes. Because I wasn't here last year when this was all voted. It was voted as a capital item for fiscal 16 budget, correct? And then it was up to the council to determine but to find out whether or not it was going to affect MOE. That's You've correct. now found out it affects MOE, but it is also included in this recitation of items that would be paid for out of fund balance, as opposed to items under the current estimated surplus. Is that correct? Um, it, because it's on it's on the second page or it's on the uh, second amount of money, if you will, that's up for consideration tonight with a total expenditure of five hundred eighty-five thousand, or at least it's listed in those programs or those plans. The sixty-three, yeah, on page two, you start. Right. Yeah. And that that's that's being included in your recommended the school committee's recommended five hundred eighty-five thousand being spent out of fund balance. Am I correct? This Thank is you. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yes. And if it is in that fund balance recommendation, will that affect MOE? No. no. Then it would seem that our recommendation would be agree with their spending it out of their fund balance as opposed to the capital fund of the town. Thank you very much. Um, well, just, just a point of clarification. Are you suggesting that we spent out of the fund balance or the projected um, surplus that you'll have this year? It's, it's the fund, the fund balance. Madam Chair, can I ask a question through? Absolutely. 
for the Monterey Monterey. Sure. Nice. So just just a point of clarification. <coughs> if the town council um, chooses not to support the sixty-three thousand dollars because it affects the MO uh, makes of effort MOE, um, and that sixty-three thousand dollars you would budget it for capital for the school. Are you going to be open to at least allow that money to be used towards another capital project? That's my first question. My second question has to do with the year before when the um, town council purchased over $90,000 worth of um, technology that, as you now say, affects the maintenance of effort. Where does that stand now? Because you did purchase that, and so does that now affect the current year's base by that amount? Because you yourself just said it affects maintenance of effort. So just curious, I'll just leave that with you now. The whole purpose, the whole purpose of making it going with, with the $63,622 uh, approval is that originally we wanted to get, uh, we, we had really wanted to get the uh, program going. And then I got the rigors of $90,000. And then when, this, when they came back the following year, said, well, we needed to find out if, if this particular thing, if we do it again, if it would affect us. Because normally things, if you do the one-shot deal, um, there was some more or less uh, forgiveness, for lack of a better term, in the process. And uh, however, because once we, did, once, we had, once we had the final, final draft out of wood, then that was basically a game changer, in my humble opinion. And so if it wants to be paid out of fund balance, I personally have no no, um, no problem with it. But for the council to approve the sixty-three thousand dollars to basically uh, put this again to raise to raise the uh, appropriation level and do, dealing with the maintenance of effort, uh, I, I personally can't say. Um, Jason, um, what's the total? School budget. I don't have it in front of me, but it's about twenty-four million-ish. Four four seventy-one, I think. Yeah, right. Okay, so adding sixty-three thousand dollars to maintenance of effort would increase that by a percentage of what, roughly? Well, next year's appropriation would have to increase by sixty-three thousand dollars. Right. Okay, but we're already asking for more than for more than that as an increase. Yeah. Is my point. So I'm not sure that adding $63,000 to the maintenance of effort is that big deal. Because it's, it's not even 1%. I understand that. But Just making a point, Mr. Chair. I understand that. Uh, is, it, uh, is the Budget Committee Chairman to speak? Mm -hmm. Mr. Moderator? Sure. Mr. Chairman uh, and Mr. Moderator, I believe if, I, I don't know if you want to put this measure for reconsideration or tabling for right now because I believe this was all part of the presentation from Mr. Parmley with regards to how we could effectively work together, the school committee, the town council, the budget committee, to come up come up with effective management of funds available to spend on things like Chromebooks, like other things, and that it would be part of an agreement between the town and the school with the, certainly the approval recommendations, we can't vote on it, but we would recommend it if there were some semblance of the plan that, Jim, that uh, Jason is about to present to us. So I don't know if we've got the cart before the horse here. And, I, and again, I'm not trying to stop a vote on the, the school committee issue if, if you really want it. That's not my, my band here tonight. Um, we try to work together is what we're trying to do. Let me ask the school committee, are you, just so that everybody is clear, are you asking for the 63000 out of the fund balance as is presented in this memo that was given to the town council tonight? We put it in the memo uh, with the um, hope that if the town council decides to go ahead and fund separate from the fund, we would use the amount allocated in the fund balance for another, for some other purchase. We're putting in the recitation that you received tonight after the council sought an opinion about whether or not the impacts maintenance of effort because it's something that we need to we need to do. But you have included it in the request for spending from the fund balance, correct? Yes. Two just a matter of 
question, Mr. Speaker? Yeah. Mr. President, just to put this in context, just so it's clear, the council's vote during the budget committee, during the budget, was it was approved subject to the school committee producing a letter saying it wasn't counted against MOE. We never sought a request for MOE. We suggested to them to do that. But the council was very supportive of a capital increase to the school for that purpose. They were concerned about affecting the MOE. Perhaps, I, I, I thought I heard the superintendent suggest, if you're concerned about the MOE, would you be consider, willing to consider reassigning that 63,000 change towards a capital item that won't affect the MOE? I thought I heard him say that, and I just didn't know if that was heard by everyone. The council had kind of agreed conceptually for a $63,000 capital increase. I know for Chrome, I get it, but as long as it didn't affect the MOE, what about if there was something, right, something else, obviously the school could use it. And maybe it will be a... No, it's a distinct possibility. No, 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 it's a very distinct possibility. I mean, if, if, if the money was appropriate, then... Could, uh, they, could we just basically, you know, with this particular item, Mr. Monterey, uh, just drop this down momentarily so Jason can make his presentation to be resurrected right afterwards? Sure. Let's see what his recommendations are. Sure. 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 And the matter, um, the trail, the matter, post number three, that's what things are. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to throw in my initial, uh, well, thank you. I'll now for a second. Yes.
that change the oil now by funding pieces now versus changing the engine cost in the future, it's a win-win for the taxpayers. Everybody here that lives in this community, school committee, town council, budget, that is who this plan is trying to protect. So it is, do we need to fix the schools? There's absolutely items that are needed. Do we need to protect the tax, excuse me, protect the taxpayers to fund that sensibly? Absolutely, why wouldn't we want to do that? So my next paragraph, the town unfortunately is in the same position as the school with a lack of long-term plan and funding for facilities and equipment. We all have the same problem, whether it's a ceiling tile, ventilation, there's no trucks to drive, to plow, I mean the buildings we're in, there's really no big plan here. So what we need to do is start a plan. So we all know through the capital, uh, FY16 capital budget and emergency purchases as the clamshell truck this year that we are in need as well. We need a similar plan. Most of our plan is related to the majority of our needs for buildings, which we're issuing a bond to cover. So that leaves us with an estimated 1.5 million guesstimate of equipment needed for the town. Sands roads. Roads are the other thing that the town needs to fund. As we all know, we just issued a bond. I go to PBIC meetings. We're going to do half of what we thought we were going to do based on that plan, it looks like. Don't know where it's going to play out, but ultimately, as we know, we have to fund buildings, equipment, and roads. Buildings are taken care of. We can write a plan to cover the 1.5 over five years easily for equipment. Where does that leave us? Roads. A lot of money needs to go to roads. So one reason I believe the stage two application failed originally is I came in and said, if you're going to build a $4.3 million building, you also need to do 1.5 of health and safety. So really, you don't have 4.3 in repairs. You actually have $6 million. Because if you're going to build and spend 4.3, you also need to do all these other health and safety. So the number we're looking at that needs to be done in schools it's not a 4.3 nicely fit box. It's 4.3 if we spend 4.3, and then everything else that we haven't addressed. So this plan kind of doesn't delineate whether it's build or improvements. It says what needs to be done, whether it's build or improvements. Put it into one plan. Perfect segue into the plan itself. So if everybody flips to page two of the document I just handed out, the basic gist of the plan I started with the superintendent's five-year capital plan. I have no clue what's needed in the schools. I actually suggest everyone here takes a walkthrough and takes notes to, re to, to actually see what is needed or not. I don't think anybody really knows what conditions, what do we need, what do we not need. Is the ceiling tiles fair? Is, is ventilation needed? Does anybody even, based on Mike Ratko's point, do we even really know all of that? Now, could we argue against it if we saw it with our own two eyes? Probably not. We'd probably realize there are a lot more things that are needed to be done than just build a, a, a school to satisfy this answer. So ultimately, I created three models. The three models all come from their five-year plan. Model A is, if we did all the health and safety just to reconfigure kids from one school to another, what would it estimate it cost us? This number is a moving target. I can't be the one to tell the schools what their needs are. I can only take their plan and estimate it from a common sense approach, from a finance perspective. So all these plans are not necessarily the answers. They're just, what would it be if it was this? So plan B would be, we have to build classrooms, but yet we still need health and safety done. So as you can see, that number is the highest number of this because it includes spending 4.3 on buildings and doing everything else for that five-year plan for health and safety. The reason I pick model A is if it turns out that we can do it for the least cost and reconfigure, well, obviously, the, the result is the least amount of bond issue. It's the least amount of cost, the least amount of long-term. So, if that's the thing that you know we want to shoot for, is to keep the tax rate down, then we want to shoot for Model A. Now, if it comes back that that's impossible per a study, then we're on Model B or C. You see what I mean? So this is just a model 
to get to the answer of who's going to pay for it. It's not necessarily this is factual, what's needed, and this is the exact dollars they have. It's just a concept of if it was this, how would we pay for it? So we'll go to the funding sources. Everybody understand the concept of the three models and where it started from? Was it from their plan? So now, if that changes, if an engineer comes in and says the ceiling tiles aren't needed at all, I can't answer that. I don't believe you can. I don't even know if they can. Maybe the superintendent and engineer could. Maybe it would vet this answer that's needed to know that that needs, you know, attention. It needs to be funded. So the funding sources for the plan, and the first funding source that I have is the school fund balance. What I did is I tried to estimate what they would have at the end of two and a half years to go into this plan. Uh, based on our meeting, I'm not sure if this is the number anymore. Hearing that they've re earmarked 400000 of the seven hundred this year, if they finish off and re earmark that, this number might be closer to a million. That million is derived from what they have on hand, less a reserve for, for their budget. I believe they have to have a reserve. As you know, at the council meeting Monday night, I presented that I believe we should have a reserve as well. It should be a formal policy, a formal fund balance reserve to protect us. We lose revenue, an earthquake happens, I don't know, some some major catastrophe, you know, I, I'm not really sure. Flint water shows up next to, I, I don't know what's going to happen, but we need to protect ourselves from that. And they do as well. If a fluctuation happens where three special ed students move in, what's going to happen? Your money's gone because it's all there. They need the cushion to protect them, just as the town does. So I wholeheartedly agree that there should be some reserve on hand to offset any fluctuations that are unforeseen or could blow up in their face, uh, to put it simply. Um, so this item or this amount of money from the school is what do they have on hand, less the reserve, plus whatever their surpluses might be between now and the next two years. If, if you get to the detail of this number, I try to show that maybe there's no other operational money in the next couple of years because they re earmark throughout their own budget, their own money, for <coughs> programs, services, capital needs, technology, whatever it may be, they should be spending their current, future, whatever it may be, surpluses re earmarked onto their programs. That's what their purview is. So this plan is not operational at all. It only considers funding building, facility, reconfiguration, building, whatever it may be, capital, does not affect operations at all, specifically related to building, facility, and capital. So if we look at the second, number two, this is what has changed in our plan. Um, I was proposing to fund it right through MOE, and the reason I was doing that is a good faith effort to show that we need to help you to fix these buildings. Would anybody disagree that ultimately it's the taxpayer paying for this, whether it comes from an MOE or a bond issuance in five years? It's all coming from the taxpayer. So I would be willing to offer a year-on-year -year increase if I know it's going to repair the buildings. That's, but as their discussion with me at the time of the meeting that I had with them, they prefer not. They prefer to go to a capital plan managed by a building committee to do the projects. And, and it eliminates this MOE concern. So I really can't say no to that. It puts us on for funding capital, yes, at an amount of $200,000 a year, yes. But that's not an MOE capital. That's If we fund all these projects so the revolving fund does everything, at some point in time, we don't have to fund capital anymore. That would be the result of doing a good plan, is changing the oil, and at the end of the thing, your engine's still running, you know? You don't have to replace the whole building at the point in time. So, the, re the, the, the thing I really wanted to harp on about this is, we've already have 99 change in our budget. So, $100,000 of funding them 200 is already built into our tax rates. I'm gonna speak like I'm a taxpayer, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, I'm just trying to do it for ease of, of wording. We already have 100000 in our budget earmarked for school capital in the tax rate you already pay. So the tax rate would go up $0 to fund them 100000 to this plan. We also have another item in our budget for settlements payable for 100000 That's coming off our books this year. If we re-earmarked that to this plan, 
the taxpayer would pay a zero dollar increase to fund 200000 a year to a capital plan to repair the schools. Zero dollar tax increase to fund 200000 a year to fund the schools. I don't see how anybody could disagree with a concept like that. Because ultimately, if we go back to the first thing I said, it's coming from the taxpayer, whether it's coming now or later. If we issue a bond later, we're paying interest on this. If we put our money up now, we're getting a 34 to 39% return on it. What's the best situation to fund this? Fund it with reimbursement or fund it with interest costs attached to it? I just, I can't get off of how potentially valuable them emptying their wallet with their fund balance to this plan. We kick X amount a year to, for this plan, the state to fund it, and ultimately the goal here is issue the most or the minimal bond as possible. If you look at model A here, the school will empty their wallet. I'm asking them to, which is hard. But if you look, it goes to all the things they want to spend their money on anyways. So the, the, the disconnect would be should they have a bigger reserve than what we've created. If that's the answer, then that's the answer. The plan can change based on everybody's wants, needs. What this community feels it should do, is this right? I tried to just get a plan of, can we all get to the table here? Because it's better if I kick and they kick, than if they just kick and then 10 years from now, nothing's done and we issue a huge bond to try to do the thing that we never did because we never funded it. I believe that's actually what happened in the past, where a bond was issued to close Hallowell. Now, I've only been here a year, but from the research I do, it kept getting siphoned off and it was never done. Hallowell was never closed. Part of this plan, well, it's like 1.5 on issue yet, but whatever, that's a different story. Part of, this, part of this plan tries to eliminate that. I, it, the money needs to go to, to an entity that's going to do the thing that's needed to be done and not siphoned off into something that's not what the plan is about. I thought the plan from the voters was to decommission or close or whatever Hallowell. Is that not what the plan is? So that's what we need to do with this money. So now let's get to the hard part of my concept. Who's going to manage this and work together? And this is almost where I want to turn it over to the town council and the school committee. Are you willing to be create a body to manage this plan? And I don't want to say PBIC because PBIC, no, 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 hold on. Hold on. PBIC has wonderful people and they work together and I go to all the meetings and, and I like to see what they're doing here, but they might not be the experts on replacing the tiles of the school. We might need an SBC to do that. We might need school people, school building, not the PBIC because the expertise on that might be roads or it might be the town building. It might have nothing to do with the school. So if we had an entity, we'll just, my concept, I guess I was thinking about it, you guys nominate four, you nominate five. Majority, minority, all works together to fund a plan to close Hallowell together. So now I, I kind of want to turn it over to how amenable are people to really work together to do this plan? Because I think one of the things historically that happened that blew this up was a lack of communication and a lack of just discussing and knowing. If we can all agree that we need to communicate no and we're all willing to do the right thing because we stick to it, I don't see how we can't win. So now I want to go over things that I I've got four points or five points that are important to just remember about this for the town. Now this isn't to the school, this is for the town specifically, I wrote this. The cost to the taxpayer. Remember, this might be a zero dollar increase in your tax rate to fund 200,000 to this plan. I just, I can't get off of that. That seems so reasonable to me to do it. I don't know how we wouldn't want to do that. Um, second point to make, if we do the plan in Model A is the answer, we're only issuing a $1.6 million bond. If Model C is the answer, we're only issuing a $3.8 million bond. We're trying, the plan tries to get away from wasting money. I think the concept of the initial Hallowell bond was to close Hallowell. And I didn't want to say money was wasted, but we didn't close Hallowell. That's what we need to do. That's what the plan that we have to follow is. 
So if we all agree that that's the goal, I can't see how we can't get there if we're all willing to put in to get there. The third point I want to make is, basically I'm asking the school to empty the wallet to do what they want to do. This plan came from them. It came, not, I don't want to say specifically the school committee, but it came from the school entity of what their needs are. That's got to be the place that starts where these things that we need to do came from. Uh, I can't go there and say they need to do ceiling tiles because I know nothing about that. But maybe their facility person and the superintendent and the committee all agree that that's something that's needed to be done. If everybody on this committee, we'll call it this SBC, agrees that that's a part of the plan to be done. We all agree that's kind of the, again, I keep going back to that same concept. But fourth point to make, after the meeting we've had where they don't want it to be MOE, it actually is in the town's favor. Because at some point, 10, 20, 30 years from now, when it's fully funded, and the revolving fund has money to do all the projects they need, it's not going to have to be funded by the town anymore. So ultimately, the goal is to do everything we need, give the money to build up so they have their own capital re uh, revolving model, and we step out and let them manage their stuff correctly at some point. So it's, it's, it's a better concept than mine when I want it to go to MOE or would offer it through MOE to go to the school building plan that they're considering. It actually protects the council and the taxpayer more. Because now we're not on the hook to fund that if they don't need it. If we ultimately fund 10 million of projects and they all get done, and now the projects are, you know, we want to paint because we want it to be purple instead of green, there's money there to do that. And it's not coming from the town, it's coming from what they already have on hand because of the reimbursement piece of them controlling the plan. The last point I want to make is, I said this, but uh, I want to touch on it again. This is strictly capital facility in nature. This has nothing to do with operations. If operations support an MOE increase, then it will. If operations support an MOE level funding, it will. That has nothing to do with us fixing buildings and doing a capital plan. Operations and capital should be completely separate issues. So those are the five points. Um, I guess I'll open up to questions, but I don't know where to start or how I should do this, Mr. Moderator. No. Um, anybody from the council have questions? Start there. Just have a comment, Jason. You're yeah. awesome. <laughs> you really are. Thank you. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't, I don't think it's hard to um, get a concept that works for everybody. The hard part's going to be actually getting together and looking past what our agendas are for the common goal. That's the hard part here. What's the common goal? We need to fix some of these schools. We need to fix these buildings. We need new trucks. You know what I mean? We need better roads. We need all these things. Right. This is one concept of many we could do in this town as a plan for our future. This isn't a, you know, tomorrow plan. This is a, where are we going to be in 10 years? Are we going to be able to repair that road? Do we, are we responsible with what our tax rate increases are? Are we doing what we should be doing? So that's that's kind of what comes from this. Is I just one weekend I sat after reading the five-year capital plan. I said, well, you know, I, we could come up with something that everybody wins. Why not? So I sat there, and that's what prompted this. Absolutely. And now, this prevents another Halloween. I'm I'm hoping so. I, I'm really hoping that people see the value of respecting each other. That's really what I want to see here, because if I respect you and you respect me, we're getting there faster, because I'm rowing in lockstep with you. Now, if I'm rowing against you, we're going in a circle. So that's the kind of, you know, those things play well to me, because that's just, I don't know about everybody else here, but when you make decisions at home, is it to make things harder, make things easy? You know, when you manage your household, when you manage whatever the thing you manage, do you do it to rub people the wrong way and get your agenda? Or are you trying to? Sometimes. If that's <laughs> that's you, your feeling that day, then you know, I, I just I, I look I want to look past the interest of don't raise taxes a penny because they get too much. I want to look past you don't give us enough because we don't fund programs and our buildings are falling apart. I want to look past those things. I know I know what people have those feelings. What can we do to get us out of that? So I, I don't want to look at those divergent 
points of view. I want to look at the common goal in the end. And, and I hope that can be accomplished. I mean, I believe it, it can. It's just a matter of having people willing to do it. Now, my point and the reason, another factor of why I believe it should be the committee approach that I've come up with is I go to PBIC meetings. I see people work together for the common good of our town. It happens. It just might not happen in front of this camera. It might not happen, you know, in the valley breeze. But when it comes to people doing their jobs for this town, they're out there trying. <laughs> You know, and that, that another reason that would prompt me to come up with a plan is let's do the right thing here. Right, does it does it now one last comment is if this fails and you want me to rip it up, it's not gonna hurt my feelings. Because I tried. I tried. So that's what I'll leave it at. It's try to do the right thing. If you fail, at least you tried. So any other comments or questions from the council? I uh, guess um, Jason, I know you've this is a great plan. I've always believed that in, in our community there should be an entity that takes care of all our town buildings. Whether it be schools, whether it be Scouts Hall, whether it be uh, Bushy School, uh, Kerry Kennel, even Kennel here, Kennel Dean. But the fact that the fact is is that when you appropriate money over a period of time, you think something's going to be done and get siphoned off to something else. That's where the problems have belied itself. And that's why I believe if any money is going to be done, it has to be earmarked. I believe in earmarked that the first express purpose. I, I think that's what the revolving fund does, though. It forces your earmark to be in things that are in this plan. Right. And that's, so. and that's my, my hope and prayer that if this entity is created, and uh, I'm, willing to, I'm willing to you know take a leap of faith can't speak for the other members of the council. But all I just want to see is that everything has to be done. We have to find a cost effective way to do it. And that's what I want to see, a business approach to government. And uh, let's sharpen the pencils, do the best we can. Let's cooperate. Sometimes can we get caught up, and, but otherwise than that, I just want to say that I uh, appreciate this. To me, it looks very doable. And whatever guidance you can give the council, including working with the Budget Commission and the Planning Board as well, and working with the school committee to make it a reality. That's all I have to say. Uh, anybody else on the council? If not, anybody on the school committee want to comment on Mr. Armley's uh, presentation? I just want to say thank you. I think it, I mean, it was a lot of time. It was very detailed. Um, and I think from myself and a number of people on the board, that's what we're looking for to try to I mean, we're sitting here, we're trying to do these things together. We haven't spent any money because we're trying to This is why I know what could happen. People want it to. Right. They want it to. It's just a matter of making it. So thank you. My so, pleasure. So to your point, um, I've already sent off the email based on our earlier discussion to Ride. Um, when I get that response back, I'll provide it back to the chairs and, and the solicitor. Um, and then I guess the next step is just to create that fund. So, um, you know, whether we go wholeheartedly into the plan or whether we, you know, take a, a baby step and, and you know, and start it off, I think it's a great start. Um, and I do appreciate you pulling together. I, you know, we've worked together on the PBIC and. Yeah. Um, I, well, I gotta say, I couldn't have done this plan without the five-year capital plan that was provided to me by the school department. Without the legwork that they did, I would have no basis to come up with a plan. So, or, the, or the apparently four hours that you were uh, yeah, out of beer on Saturday yes. night. <laughs> <laughs> I, would not have, I would have planned ahead for the beer and not done this part, so I give you, you know, credit. You know, when my kids are out and I'm at home doing nothing, I don't have video games anymore, I don't have anything to enjoy. So it's either TV or work. Yeah. Um, the only I know it's weird. The only thing I'll let the council know is his plan doesn't include any funding that you might get if you, you sell the Hollywood property. Please. What? Could you speak up a little bit? Sure. So the funding that he put together just looks at a bond and looks at funding through a, a, we'll call it a revolving fund. It does not include any funding that you might be able to get if you sell the Hollywood property. So if you sell that property, you could utilize that money to fund some of this expenditure. Mr. Clifford? I think, the original, I think there was a lot of discussion when the PBIC was coming up with the bond proposal 
And I think there was a sentiment among the PBIC members that the Hallowell property should not be sold in the event that down the road we need a school. And I think there was also funds in the bond issue to put in some fields at Hallowell after the building was uh, demolished, or at least one field. It was a, not a significant amount of money, but I think the thought was they could use it for recreational space because we need more recreational space. And then it is, if, if and when we ever needed a school, um, location, we had it. We didn't have to go purchase it or find it. And hard pot, big parcels of land are getting hotter and hotter to find it down. And I think that was their concern. Every time we found it, we've had to find a piece of property to build a school on. It's never in the exact location that you wanted, never in the central area build of the town. And, yeah, there was a lot of concern. And I, I thought, too, at that time, that the did you not voice an opinion on that, Mr. Lundberg, um, at the time, that you didn't I, want it sold? I did, and I think it was supported by the then existing, uh, what was it? It was CBIC. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was actually uh, before that. It was a yeah, task force. Task force, yeah. Right, yeah. It was supported, but, and I'm going to, um, you know, kind of, I'll roll off topic now. We're talking about oh. selling Hallowell. Okay. It's really, you know, pull it back. And, I just, I just wanted to say to that point is that is the beauty of this plan, is if it changes to add something, it just, Three seconds, insert line, add number, it repopulates for you, you have a clue of where we are again. I mean, it's very, very easy. It's a simple spreadsheet function. So if we need 30 million, I'm just going to throw a number out there. I can get it in here and tell you it's not doable in a second. <laughs> so really, it's functional. So if that is a piece of, oh, we need to do the, um, the fields, as Mr. Clifford mentioned, and that's what we want to do because we agree to do that. The model changes to include that. You know, the, the model is a very, it's like moving parts of the whole thing because I can't tell what's a necessity. I mean, I can read a plan and guess, you know, is ventilation sound like a necessity in a school? Absolutely. So I can guess, and, you know what I mean? But this isn't a final figure at all. It can't be until the knowledge base gets it and puts it in. I mean, again, I can I can use my common sense, but that only goes so far because I'm not the person that knows these things. That's also why I suggest doing a walkthrough. I think you're going to get a lot better picture of some of the needs with the walkthrough than you are by just reading on a piece of paper that it's either tiles or ventilation or, I mean, that's just my idea. So, um, nobody else will be there. Yes, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I think there was to ask something about our solicitor. Is it possible you could craft something with uh, Mr. Scudgio to, to forge an agreement uh, in the event? So if you vote on it, take the time to talk. You got to the plan that Jason is proposing? Absolutely. Uh, Other words, to sit down so we can have an entity that's going to basically we approve the, cap uh, the capital fund that will be able to do this. Uh, and uh, Jason's plan, I feel, is. Most reasonable, very much common sense, and uh, I think it's about time that we all get together and sit down at the table and let's do something for, for our taxpayers. So let's sharpen our pencils and, and take care of our fiduciary responsibilities for them. Um, if nobody from any of the boards has anything else on Jason's presentation, which was excellent, um, yeah, we'll go back to the record. Excuse me. Yeah, Jean, sorry. I ju uh, just to reiterate what was already said, I'd like to thank, I'd like to thank Jason uh, for all his work that he did on his own time, as he explained, when his kids were away and he had no beer. <laughs> um, this you know, is funner than watching TV. <laughs> so, uh, again, a great job, uh, a lot of forethought, a lot of, uh, obviously, financial expertise that went into it, uh, and designing the spreadsheet so that, again, things could move, as he has explained. So just uh, on behalf of the planning board, thank you very it's much. my pleasure. I, I, I'm here for the taxpayer, and that's everybody here. <clears throat> that's, the, that's how I look at doing my job, is I try to be responsible to the entity that really is who I've been charged of, and that's the taxpayer. All right, um, so I think we're finished with item three. Oh, I'm sorry. Not that I want to have the last minute. <laughs> what you're going to get. <laughs> I hope. How much time are you giving me, sir? 30 seconds. Uh, I think if the council is amenable to putting this type of a committee together, 
then I think it would be the Budget Committee's recommendation, and I just say it for myself, but I do have two members here tonight. Uh, there was a question that is still on the table that I know is probably bugging the school committee about the $63,000. That's where we're going next. Okay, because I was just going to say we would be amenable to trading that off for the truck that they've got on their capital improvement plan for this year. And that will affect them a week. So, we we'll already start this. The, uh, <laughs> which was the funding of the technology purchase of the $63,000. Um, is that something that the school committee was asking to vote for a vote from the council on? Um, and some decision as to where they could get that money from, whether it be from the fund balance or some other plan. So I'll throw it back to you folks to discuss. Absolutely. Um, I'm amenable to the I'll only speak for myself. I'm amenable to the, the funds that were earmarked in the calendar year, uh, and if they could be utilized where it doesn't affect our MOE. I'm amenable to release those funds to the school department, whether it be to pay for a truck, whatever it is. Uh, and also, too, is that uh, I truly believe that uh, it's a good faith effort on the, on the council's part. <coughs> That we won't hold the money hostage. You may take something out of one pocket or we'll give it to you in another way. So this way maybe the left hand will know what the right hand is doing for a change. But anyway, uh, is that a motion, Mr. President? That's that motion. I'd like to I'd like to give the money that was uh, sixty-three thousand two hundred six hundred twenty. What is that figure? Sixty-three thousand six hundred twenty-two dollars. Second. This particular case, it was a truck that was needed by the school department. Is that true, or I don't know? Or would you want to give? Or would you I think give that, was that was just an example. That was an example. Oh, except, oh, if we can give some flexibility into it, into it for the school department to find something that's not an only. Could we just put it on our agenda for next week and let the superintendent make a recommendation to the school committee, and then we'll forward you our recommendation for what it would be used for, so you can take an action on to approve the capital project that we submit to you for your next meeting. Well, I think what they're saying is they're going to take a vote to allow you to use that you use money. Use the money. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know. I don't know what it comes to me. No, this would have to be, but this is unfortunately going to have to be not in what we are. Yes. So, so you need to make clear that your motion is to On the table, I'm they'd sure. have to rescind for, and for, then we work for discussion. For discussion, discussion is continuing. I think there's a motion that wasn't withdrawn. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah, there was a motion that they were going to release the 63,000, whatever that amount was. It was not just for the discussion, and there was a second. They need to rescind that and rework. Reverted motion. And so let's go my original motion. I'll let the solicitor's uh, uh, advised motion to the chair uh, be forthwith. Before the council. Before the 
second with a second. Second withdrawn, and then second made on the amended motion. That's the line for the discussion. That's right. Also, discussion here. Please, we need your input tonight. Is there any further, further discussion? The, the only question was, I think, by the budget committee, do you want to limit it to the list that they had on the capital budget list? No. I, I think uh, in the uh, in the spirit of good faith, we leave it open so they use uh, the 63, 63, 6.2 uh, at their discretion.